The human nose is a wonderful thing. It can remind you of your childhood, guide you to delicious food, and even warn you of danger. Think an ocean breeze sweeping over the beach, freshly diced onions from a taco truck, or accidentally leaving the gas stove on. You may distinctly remember one or all of these experiences, which should prove to you just how powerfully your sense of smell can invoke memories. Although our noses are not as sensitive as those of dogs or other species, they are, in my opinion, one of our more intricate and fascinating senses. So we'll spend a few minutes today talking about them. What exactly do an ocean breeze, chopped onions, and gas stoves have in common? Why are they such strong smells in the first place? And why does that matter? To answer those questions, you're going to have to learn a little chemistry. The refreshing odor of the ocean as you walk along the beach. What is that smell exactly? Yes, salt, of course. But salt alone doesn't smell like that. This is decisively pungent, unique. The smell of the sea has many components, but an important one is called dimethyl sulfide. Dimethyl sulfide is produced by certain types of algae and phytoplankton in ocean ecosystems, and is responsible for that slightly savory, sulfur-like smell that I just mentioned. Small amounts are also present when cooking seafood and cabbage, among other foods. Dimethyl sulfide has niche uses in organic chemistry, so it is produced industrially using hydrogen sulfide gas over an alumina catalyst. Hydrogen sulfide is another foul-smelling compound, this time like rotten eggs, that is a waste product from refining petroleum. Starting to see the pattern of smelly substances yet? If not, let's take a look at our second scenario. Freshly chopped onions in a home-cooked meal or from a street vendor. If you've never had the privilege of slicing onions, you should know that it makes you cry. Not because you're sad, but rather because you're being exposed to synpropanethyl S-oxide. The nomenclature is a mouthful, but I've broken it down for you on the screen if you'd like to understand each part of the name. This compound is a natural lacrimator, which means it irritates your eyes and forces you to produce tears. If you'd like to learn more about lacrimators, check out my video at the top of the screen, and don't forget to subscribe. While not smelly in the same sense as the other chemicals in this video, propane thiol S oxide affects your tear ducts and nasal passages in such an unforgettable way that I think it deserves to be included here. If you have a gas stove or furnace in your house, you might have smelled a gas leak once or twice. The choking odor of rotten eggs warns you of a possibly dangerous gas leak. Natural gas is mostly methane, however, which is odorless. How can that be? Maybe I'm lying to you. Or maybe gas companies purposely infuse their natural gas with additives for safety reasons. Because methane has no smell, it will be impossible to detect a leak in your house, which would be extremely dangerous. For that reason, a substance called tert-butyl thiol is added to natural gas in most cases. Tert-butyl thiol has that characteristic scent of rotten eggs, detectable at less than one part per billion. For reference, each dot here could represent one million molecules in the air you breathe. If we zoom in on one dot, now each dot represents 1,000 molecules. We can zoom in yet another time, where each dot is now one molecule. If one single dot is tert-butyl where the rest are nitrogen, oxygen, or other gases in the air, you would still be able to smell it. Tert-butyl is also prepared from hydrogen sulfide, another example of recycling hazardous wastes and turning them into useful substances for us. The three compounds I've talked about here, dimethyl sulfide in the ocean, Synpropane thiol S oxide in onions, and tert-butyl thiol in natural gas, have one thing in common if you haven't noticed already. Sulfur. Sulfur compounds are generally smelly, which is the basis for many of their applications. Amino acids like methionine and cysteine contain sulfur, and when they degrade, for example in rotting food, they produce other organosulfur compounds. This is hypothesized to be a reason for our exceptional sensitivity to the odor of sulfur. We are innately protecting ourselves from the dangers of rotting food. So the next time you smell something that pungent or putrid, it just might be sulfur. Think about the amazing properties of a single atom, and how that atom can so strongly influence your senses. That is why you should care about the smell of sulfur.
If you enjoyed this video or learned anything about organic chemistry, like and subscribe to my channel. For additional content, like me on Facebook, and if you are able, please consider donating to my Patreon page to support me and the material I create for you. Thanks for watching.